Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Today we're going to be repairing this Jupiter 6. Right now it's more like a Jupiter 4. Two of the voices are out. So if we go down the keyboard... So one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, we'll track that down and repair it in this video. And while we'll have the hood open probably most of the time of this video, I am noticing in the camera that all the, the LEDs are, are flashing. And that's just a, a, a frame rate uh, trick of the eye. The only LEDs that are actually flashing to the eye are the LFOs and the arpeggio. So here under the hood, uh, you can see what we've got going on. We have the, uh, there's two pot boards or panel boards here. There's an output board here. There's a little... A little AC filter board here, power supply board, uh, CPU key assigner board, and then you have two boards here that are called the module boards um, or, or voice boards. And uh, each board can s provide support for four voices. And this is a six voice synthesizer, so you'll notice this board is fully populated, and this board here is missing some stuff here and some stuff here. So this is four voices and this is two voices. So there's actually three CPUs inside the Jupiter 6. So on the key assigner board there's a CPU chip here with its with its ROM and then each of the module boards has its own CPU and ROM. So there's three CPUs running in this synthesizer. So because this pattern of, of voices that are out is the same, so one two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That, that means our problem is that two voices are out. It's not some weird thing with the switch matrix of the keyboard or the key assigner. So we can be pretty confident that our fault is on one of these two boards. And the first step we're going to need to figure out is which two voices are out. So to figure out which of the voices are bad, Let's go ahead and look at the output of the module board. So this connector here, uh, pin 23 on that connector, so there's 21, 22, 23 here, is going to have the audio output from, from this left board with the four voices. So if any of the four voices from that board are sounding, we should see it on the scope. If any of the two voices from this board are sounding, we shouldn't see it on the scope. So I'm going to press a key. So here's voice one, and we don't see anything or hear anything. Here's two, and we see that. Three, we don't see or hear anything. Um, four. So, uh, of the six voices, we did see and hear four voices from this left board. So that means our two dead voices are, or our two silent voices, are here on the, uh, the two-voice board. So let's hop over to this other module board and repeat the same test just to be sure. So now, uh, we're going to expect to hear the four voices from the other board, but not see them on the scope. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so yeah. So this, the, the two voices, we're not hearing the two voices from this module board. So there could be any number of problems causing this. Um, the control voltages might not be coming into the board. The CPU uh, or something in the digital section of the board may not be working. There may be a problem with... Uh, inside the, each of the voices, so both voices are fail, failing, uh, or there could be a problem with the, uh, the VCA and that mixes the voices at the end. So um, let's, rather than start at the beginning and go through all the control voltages and, and CPU and everything like that, let's just pick an arbitrary point, let's say the oscillators, because there's some nice test points for that, and we'll see if the oscillators uh, for those two voices are running and uh, if they change pitch when I press a key. So what I'll do is I'll flash the schematic. So you can see first of all this is the whole module board so there's, there's a lot of places we could start poking around. 
Um, and now I'll zoom in where we're actually going to start. We're going to start at the uh, the uh, VCO mixer. So we're going to look at these test points 2A and 2B, uh, which will show us the two oscillators for voice 1 and voice 2, respectively, if we have something. Okay, so I'm going to go on to test point 2A, which is our oscillator 1 and 2 for voice 1. And we can see on the scope that that there's two two oscillators running there. Uh, now I'll press some keys on the keyboard, and I can see that the uh, the pitch changes, and, and it seems reasonable. So let's go to the test point two B, which is uh, voice two oscillators. So there's something there, and it changes pitch when I press keys, even though I don't hear it. So now we know the digital section and the VCOs of the two voices on this board are working. Uh, we'll move, over, move down the line to the next thing, which is the VCF. So here's the schematic, and the VCF is, uh, is broken out into a, another uh, schematic page. But let's actually look at the... Uh, at the output of the, that multiplexer chip, the, the uh, MC14551 uh, IC50 that's sitting after the VCF. So we're going to look at that IC50 uh, pin 14 for voice 1 and pin 4 for voice 2. I'm looking at the board, I think they have the, the schematics are incorrect in the manual. Uh, because IC50 is this uh, is a Curtis chip here, Curtis VCA chip. So I think they're meaning IC51 or 52. So let's take a look at IC51 pin 14. So there's 16 pins on this guy. So this guy here. So this is the output of the filter for voice one. I have the filter wide open on the panel, so we're seeing the same thing that we saw from the, the, the VCO mixer. So we are getting output there. Let's go over to pin four. So this is voice two. Yeah. And uh, it's the same thing. So the, the filters are okay. Filter control voltages obviously are making it okay here. And uh, we have output, correct looking output at the end of the filter stage. So we're, we're narrowing down on this problem uh, really, really quickly. So there's only really two things left. There's the uh, the first VCA and the second VCA. So the first VCA is a per voice VCA, and the second VCA is a is a whole board uh, VCA. So let's take a look at the uh, the first VCA. So for this, we're going to uh, look at the output of this Curtis chip. Hey, that's, that's the one that was uh, labeled IC50 on the board. It's labeled IC49 in the schematic. So here's that chip that's labeled IC50A on the board, but it says CEM3360 VCA chip. So we're going to look at the VCA output from voice 1, which is pin 13. And unlike the filter and the VCO, which we're always running, um, this, uh, and we need to press a key to, to see something here. So uh, I may have to press all six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, there's, no, there's no output there at the output of uh, VCA1. Let's take a look at voice two's VCA. That's pin two of this same chip. So here, pin two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, so nothing there. So we'll go and we'll check the input to the VCA. I fully expect there to be the, the signal there because there's, there's really only a, a, like a resistor and a capacitor in between the last point that we checked on the, uh, the output of the filter. So uh, pin nine of this chip is a voice one VCA input. And we can see that there's something there. And uh, pin six of the chip is a VCA2 input, so 2, 4, 6, and we have something there. So um, 
we can't yet conclude that the VCA chip is bad because there's one more pin we need to check first, and that's the control input. So um, if, if the VCA is never being told to open up, we're never going to see anything on its output. So we need to see that when we press a key, uh, we're getting a control voltage that tells the VCA to open up and let the signal through. And looking at the schematic, um, that's pin 10 um, on the Curtis chip for voice 1 and pin 5 for voice 2. So here's pin 10 and I'll go ahead and press some keys. One, well, that, was, uh, that was the one. So we saw the we saw the scope pop up there. I'll get to it again. There, uh, we have a uh, the VCA control input is uh, is present. Let's take a look at voice two. That's pin five. So two, four, five. We'll do the same thing. And there it is. And we can confirm that the uh, the envelope levels are correct by hopping over to uh, the same chip on the other board. And I think that was pin pin ten. Oh. Yeah. So when when I'm gating a a, a note, uh, the the VCA opens up to the same level control voltage on the uh, good board and the bad board. So at this point, we can conclude that this Curtis chip here, this CEM thirty three sixty. VCA chip is bad and we'll go ahead and replace it. So here I've pulled the module board and uh, you gotta love the typos on the Japanese synth boards. So we're looking at the module board, B-O-R-D, and uh, over here is the CPU section, uh, slave cup. Uh, I think they meant slave CPU. Anyway. Okay, so I just put this board back in with our new VCA chip in an IC socket in case it should ever fail again. Someone doesn't need to pull the board, do any soldering. And now, one, two, three, four, five, six. All our voices are present and accounted for. And just like that, the Jupiter 4 is once again a Jupiter 6. Hope you found this to be an interesting peek inside the Jupiter 6. I'm Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.